Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over function overloading in C++. And function overloading is also known as polymorphic functions. Personally, I think this term makes more sense because it comes from Greek. So poly means many and morph means forms. So function overloading or polymorphic function, they allow us to create multiple functions with the same name. So over here, I have a function that takes in two integers, a and b, and we just multiply them and return that value. So here I'm making the function call for multiply. And if I save and run a program, you can see we get five times three, which gives us 15. So function overloading allows us to create multiple functions with the same name. So I can create another function called multiply, and I can pass in three arguments like so. And so I can return a times b times c. And let's call the function. So I'm going to do c out. And let's do 5 times 3 times negative 10 is equal to multiply 5, 3, negative 10. So now if I save and run the program, we have 5 times 3, which is 15. And 5 times 3 times negative 10, this gives us negative 150. So we have two functions of the same name being called. And no two functions of the same name can have the same exact signature. So what that means is I cannot define another multiply function that returns an int and takes in two arguments. So let's say I do int c int d and I return c times d. It doesn't matter if I change the variable names here the signature is still the same. So it's a function called multiply that takes in two integers. So if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see we get this ambiguity. So we have two functions of the same signature. So C++ does not know which one to call. And in this case, we have a redefinition of this exact signature. So it's a function called multiply with two integers being passed in. So we cannot do this. Now with functions, we can also assign our parameters default values. So we can make this C optional. And by default, I can just set it to one. Now what happens here? If I save and run the program, you can see we get call of overloaded multiply that takes in two integers is now ambiguous. Because with default parameters, I'm basically saying this one's optional. So now I can actually call this function with two integers but this other function also takes in two integers. Therefore, we have this ambiguity. All right, so whenever you're working with function overloading, you want to avoid having conflicts. Okay, so I have multiply that takes in two integers and three integers. What if I want to multiply four integers or five? Now that would be ridiculous to create so many multiply functions just to add one parameter more each time. So the solution to that would be to pass in an array of integers. So I can pass in int, and let's call this numbers, and this would be an array of integers. And usually whenever we pass in an array in a function, we accompany it with the size. Or we can just call it n. So n is basically the same as saying the number of elements. So here what I can do is I can create a variable result and just set it to one. Then I can loop through the array, so I can do for int i is equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus, result times equal numbers at index i, and then we just return the result. So here I can create an array. So let's do int numbers, and I will put in one, two, three, four, five, and then let's call this function. So c out, and here I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, multiply, and we'll pass in numbers and five. All right, so now if I save and run the program, you can see if we multiply all the numbers in this array, we get 120. All right, so we have three multiply functions and we've been working with integers. What happens if I call these functions with other types such as double or float? Let's see what happens. So let's say I want to do 5.5 times 5.5. And I'll call multiply and I'll pass in 5.5 and 5.5. 
let's see what happens. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get 5.5 .5 times 5.5 .5 gives us 25. So what happened here? So we don't have a multiply function that takes in doubles. So what C++ is going to do is it's going to find the best candidate to pass in these numbers. So in this case, we have two numbers, both of which are double, and we can convert doubles to integers. So what ends up happening is we pass in 5.5 .5 and 5.5 .5 into this function, and we convert the number to an int. So when we convert 5.5 .5 to an int, we just take away the decimal place. So we end up doing 5 times 5 which is why we got 25. Now, if I define a new function that returns a double, and it has the same name, multiply, and it takes in double A and double B, and I return A times B, if I call this multiply with these two doubles, what will happen? Will we get some ambiguity? Because earlier, we have proven that we can't actually use this function, but now we have another function that takes in two doubles. So now we have two candidates. So let's save and run a program and see what happens. And you can see we get 5.5 .5 times 5.5. .5. This gives us 30.25. So this function actually got called, the one that takes in two doubles and returns a double. And we don't get any ambiguity. We do have two candidates, but C++ determined that this one fulfills the role better than this other function because it's more accurate. It takes in two doubles instead. All right, now let's try something different. Instead of passing in numbers, I want to do C out dollar sign times three. So what will happen if I call multiply on the character dollar sign and three? So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 108. And that is because we convert the dollar sign symbol from the character value to its ASCII value. So we are converting it to the integer code, which I believe is 36 for the dollar sign. So we get 36 times three and we get 108. So this function is going to call this function because we can convert the character to an integer. So we get basically two integers passing into this first function over here. And we can actually redefine this behavior by creating another function that returns a string and I will call it multiply and it takes in car C and int n. And instead of multiplying these two values as if they were numbers, I want to create a string result. And I'm going to create a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, result plus equal C. And then we'll return result. So now if I save and run the program, we expect this function to call this one over here. So now you can see if I take a character and multiply it with a number, I want it to return a string of the character repeated that many number of times. Now what happens if I want to do the other way around? So I'm going to copy and paste this. And instead of dollar sign times three, I'm going to do three times dollar sign. So let's change over here as well. So what will happen if I call the function multiply with these parameters? So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 108. So basically, this function call is going to call this one over here because A is going to take in three and B is going to take in the dollar sign, which converts to an integer for its ASCII value. So what we can do is we can define another function, string multiply, that takes in the same parameters as the one above it, except we flip them. Now, what I can do is I can just copy and paste this, or I can just call multiply, and I'll pass in C and N. So this is part of function reusability. I can just call this function from this function, and I'll just pass in the parameters in the order that this function has defined them. So we should expect these two lines to return the same string, which is the three dollar signs. And actually I realized over here, I forgot to put the return statement. So remember when I return a string from here, if I don't put the return statement, it's just going to call the function and not pass a string back. So I need to return the result from this function call. Okay, so now if I save and run the program, I expect these two to both give me the three dollar signs as a string. 
And you can see that's exactly what we get. So we get $3 signs here and $3 signs here. All right, so that's function overloading or polymorphic functions in C++. So just as a recap, you can have multiple functions of the same name as long as they do not have the exact same signature. And when you're writing this many number of functions with the same name, you want to avoid any ambiguity. So you want to avoid any conflicts between the function calls. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.